the words were found and I did eat them. I didn't eat words, brothers and sisters. How do you eat them? You eat them with your eyes. That's how you eat them. You spiritually get nourishment through your eyes. And let me tell you, I can speak as a man, I can't speak as a woman. Men have to be careful. Because this eye, this eye window gets in deep. And we're visually tuned in. At least I speak for this guy. I'm visually tuned in. Okay? And that's just how God wired me. It's not a bad thing, but it can be. We have to be careful, brothers. We need to be accountable one to another. Alright, I want to turn to Ezekiel, the next book to the right, Ezekiel chapter 2. And I want to begin in verse 8. And you're all there. Amen. Because thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was within there lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he did say unto me, Son of man, eat thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. My words. How do we speak God's words? We have to eat them first. Right? If we eat God's words, they become alive in us. Amen. They become alive. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And we become alive. And we can have these same kind of appointments that Jesus had. Amen. The exact same kind of appointments. Crazy things can come into your head. God is say, hey. Go buy a gallon of milk and take it to this house. You'd be like, what? I don't even drink milk. <laughs> but you do it. And you bless somebody immensely. And you've got, you got the opportunity to be Jesus in somebody's life. Think about that. What an amazing opportunity. You know, some little thing like that could be the reason somebody ends up in heaven. Amen. Can you imagine that? How would you like to be in heaven someday and somebody come up to you and a tear just coming down their face and they just, oh, brother, thank you. Thank you for that hug that day. You know, that talk that you had with me. That, you know, sharing your lunch with me. You know? Being an example, when all the guys at work were just this, you know, and you, you stood out, you talked to me, it led me to the scriptures. This, brothers and sisters, this life is a flash in the pan. It's nothing. Nothing. Try and just think about eternity. Use your imagination. Stretch yourself out. Think about what it's going to be like. Wow. When you think about it that way, what is this life? What is it? Smoke, just nothing. But if we can serve God now under these conditions, oh, 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 oh. what's it going to be like there? Wow. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He'll be the only one in heaven. That wears scars. The only one. All of us would be perfect. But he will have scars forevermore. Mm -hmm. And the most
most gentle, piercing voice you ever heard. I, can, I just, I, I imagine his voice. I think about his voice. I hear people saying beautiful. You say beautiful. I think about choirs in heaven. I imagine people worshiping God. I imagine the sound of five million knees touching the floor at the same time. Can you imagine what that would sound like? Think about what that would do for God, because He deserves it. Wow. I think about crazy things that nobody else would ever think about. I, you know, at work, um, I work real close to the ocean. In the dark toilet, the water's always moving. I'm like, this building is moving. The water in that toilet is always moving and nothing's moving. I ask people, well, I don't know, I never noticed that. Well, it's got to be the ocean, right? The ocean's right there, constantly. I don't get it. What else does make sense? The stopper isn't working. Huh? The stopper isn't working. <laughs> Not all the toilets on beach side, brother. All the toilets, dude. The building ain't moving. Not that I can feel or touch anyway. It's craziness. You'd be surprised with simple things people don't realize. They don't see. They don't know that they even see it. Right there all the time. You know, I, I'm going to tell a story. I talked to a guy that my dad worked for for years and I've kind of getting along here. Um, and he said the other day that he was, uh, it's cold up in New York, really cold. And he said he froze up in his truck and he was at the fuel pumps. This guy come out hollering at him and he said, you got to move that truck. Well, the brakes are locked up, so he's pushing the air brake in and it's, the brakes are still on and he forced the truck to go to the side of the building. Because, you know, there's no air because it's froze up. And he said he was just ready to give up ready to call a record. And he says he heard Dad's voice. <laughs> he says, I heard Dad's voice. He says, I heard your father's voice. It said, we don't give up. We don't have money to call records. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and this guy's got money to call records. Trust me. Um, anyways, he's sitting there and this guy comes up and knocks on his window. And he says, hey, Rick, what are you doing here? He says, he says, I, he says, I looked at the guy. I knew the guy, but I, I didn't know where I knew him from or his name or anything, but I knew I knew him. And he says, well, why don't you light a fire, get some fire under that air dryer and get it, you know, get it uh, fixed up. And he goes to look at his, for his phone and he turns around and the guy's gone. Gone. Well, when Rick originally turned to this guy, he thought it was the guy from inside the, the, the truck stop that was going to be mad at him because now he's on the side of the village. So he was all friends. Anyways, the guy's gone. That was kind of weird, don't you think? Anyways, he goes into the truck stop, he buys a bottle of alcohol, pours it in the air, hoses. Here's this sound. Air starts working. He threw out the chunk of ice. Good to go. Could be a God thing, I don't know. But I thought it did sound like my father. No doubt about it. Anyways, real quick, we're going to wrap this thing up. John 14. John 14. I want to begin in verse 21. John 14 and 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Mm. Here it is. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Do we want Jesus to manifest himself to us? Amen. I want that more than I want breath. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou willest manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus had answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Praise the Lord. Is that not beautiful? Yes. What 
is the purpose of man. Fellowship with God. We are a sanctuary, brothers and sisters, for God. That's what we were created for. We are a sanctuary. A living, breathing sanctuary. God wants to drive your car. And if you let him, you will be blessed beyond your imagination. Amen. You will see things you never saw. You will think new thoughts. You will have brand new feelings, brand new emotions. You will feel like a brand new baby. Amen. And have a power that you can't even imagine. Amen. And when the devil comes running down that road to get you, you can just sit there in a passenger seat and be secure as a little baby, not worried about nothing. Amen. Because it don't matter. When he's at the wheel, you can't lose. You can't lose. And this isn't rocket science. I'm just reading the scripture. I, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whew, there it is. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever, whatsoever I have said unto you. Brothers and sisters, what we need is a sincere heart to be victorious. We need a sincere heart. We need an informed mind. An informed mind. And then it comes from where? The word. The word. And we need an infallible guide that's found only in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is asking us to overcome as he overcame. We have, he had no advantage. Well, he did have an advantage, but he never used it. Okay? Because he never stopped being God. But yet he was fully. Man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This, brothers and sisters, is the receipt for the recipe. I can't read my own writing. The <laughs> recipe for success. I got some other stuff in there, but it's just after 1230, so we're going to cut it right there. Brother Donovan, could you come up and lead us in 289?